We're almost at the end of July, and of course, July, the last month of the year without any college football. Calendar turns to August here pretty soon, and of course, football season kicks off this year on August 24th with quote-unquote week zero games. Only a handful of games that day capped off, of course, at night by the big Florida versus Miami game. We're running through a whole series of team-by-team -team preview and predictions here on the channel. These are detailed, in-depth previews, and then game-by-game -game season predictions. These videos are long, uh, 20 to 30 minutes long each. Listen, if, you, uh, if you're just looking for somebody to throw a schedule up on the screen and tell you, you know, what they think the record is going to be, these videos aren't for you. There's hundreds of videos out there like that on YouTube. These are way more detailed and in depth. We've done a whole bunch of these teams. I think we've done 14 or 15 so far. We're going to keep doing these every single day right up until the start of the season on August 24th. Up today, a Big Ten team, the Minnesota Golden Gophers? It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on LouTube today. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also and too, in addition to that as well. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year, and sometimes they're even watchable. And these previews and predictions that we're doing, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of others too, are actually watchable. So hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying these previews and predictions. If you're a Big Ten fan, uh, Minnesota, a lot of hype around P.J. Fleck, head coach. We're going to get into that in today's video. But hit the thumbs up button for me. It doesn't take you any time or cost you anything at all, but it's a huge benefit to me and the channel. All right, just a quick reminder now. Uh, I am keeping track of all the teams that you guys are mentioning in the comments section of all these videos. I, I've uh, People are tweeting me. I've got emails, direct messages on Twitter. And I'm keeping track of this list of teams that you guys want to see. And we still have well over three weeks to go of these prediction and predi uh, preview videos. And I'm going to do my absolute best to get to every single team that all of you guys want to see. But keep in mind, I am doing the Patreon suggestions first. So there's a whole list of teams over on the Patreon page that people have suggested that I do on these preview and predictions. And we're doing those first. Today's video, the Minnesota Gophers comes as a request from Stacy R. Stacy, thank you. I really appreciate you supporting the channel over on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. I can't tell you Patreon members how much it means to me that you guys have chosen to support the channel directly in that way. It is a huge, huge help. Stacy, big shout out to you. I hope you enjoy today's video and to all the Patreon members, thank you. All right, the Minnesota Golden Gophers led by, of course, head coach PJ Fleck. A lot of hype around Actually, you know what? I can't figure out if the hype is around Minnesota or if the hype is around P.J. Fleck. I think the hype is around P.J. Fleck more so than it is Minnesota. And we're going to get into a few of the reasons why I think that is. I do think P.J. Fleck is a really good coach. I just think Minnesota has a ceiling. And I think he's likely to hit that ceiling sooner rather than later. Uh, how'd they do last year? Well, okay. They were 6-6 six and six in the regular season. Three and six in the Big Ten. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I ever remember there being this much hype and excitement around a coach or a team heading into a season following a season where they were three and six in the conference. Um, you know, again, it's Minnesota, so not a knock here, but at Minnesota, if you're making a bowl game, it's considered a successful season. So in that aspect, going six and six, making a bowl game, winning the bowl game, putting you at a final record of seven uh, and six, is considered a successful season at Minnesota, but it is a little hard to understand the hype and, uh, and, and sort of all the fuss that's being made about Minnesota and P.J. Fleck. If you didn't know what Minnesota did last year, and you've just been reading a lot of things about P.J. Fleck and Minnesota and you know, uh, how they're headed in the right direction. About, you, you may have guessed their record was a little better than this in 2018, but this is what it was. They had losses to teams like Maryland, Iowa, uh, Nebraska. Uh, you guys remember Nebraska started, what, 0-6, something like that? Nebraska's first win came against 
Minnesota um, last year. Lost to Ohio State. Lost to Illinois. Uh, that's hard to justify. Uh, you know, Illinois. Uh, lost to Northwestern, which, of course, was an okay team. Uh, biggest wins of the year. Beat, beat Purdue. Pur Listen, Purdue and, and really Minnesota, and, and you could probably put four or five teams in the Big Ten in this category, they're, they're interchangeable, really. And that's sort of what you see in college football with these teams who have some good pieces, have some good parts, maybe have a good coach. They win a couple of games where you're like, oh, my God, uh, they beat Wisconsin or, 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 or Purdue, right? Because, of course, Purdue housed Ohio State. But then you look further on down the schedule before or after those wins and you say, "What?" but they lost to Illinois. And you see that a lot in college football. It's very common. Uh, these teams that are sort of in the middle, right? Not your terrible teams, not your three, four win teams, not so much your elite teams that are winning 10, 11 plus games a year, but those teams in the middle that tend to win between six, seven, eight games a year. You see this all the time. Uh, how, do, how do they get to six, seven or eight wins? By beating a few teams that you look back at the end of the year and go, how'd they win that game? And by losing to a few teams that you look back at the end of the year and go, how'd they lose that? Uh, how'd you lose to Illinois, for example? Uh, but anyway, season capped off with a bowl win over Georgia Tech. Uh, I wouldn't put too much stock in that game. Paul Johnson, of course, had been fired. There was just a lot going on there. Uh, but nevertheless, you did get a win there, uh, which capped your season off at 7-6. and six. I did not do a Minnesota preview last offseason. You guys, uh, for those of you that have been watching these preview and predictions, you know that anytime I preview a team, I put a screenshot up on the screen from my prediction for the season before. So you can laugh at me about how wrong I was, or I can brag about how right I was, whichever the case is. In the case of Minnesota, we didn't do a preview of Minnesota last year, so nothing to go off of in terms of my prediction. What does Vegas think Minnesota is going to do this year? Uh, well, you can look up these win totals, uh, these Vegas win totals for every single year. And all of a uh, Vegas win total is, is a number for Minnesota. It's six and a half. All that means is about half the money is being bet on Minnesota winning seven or more games. And about half the money is being bet on Minnesota winning six or less games. So the number comes in at six and a half. If you're a betting type person, a Minnesota fan, maybe you think they're going to have a big year. You can bet the over on six and a half, meaning you think Minnesota is going to win seven or more games. Uh, if you think this is too high, you can bet the under. And if they win six or less, you win the bet. Anyway, that's sort of how that works. We'll get into more of this college football betting stuff as we get a little closer to the uh, to the season, right? All right, P.J. Fleck, what's he done uh, in his first couple of seasons at Minnesota? Five and seven his first year, seven and six last year, like we mentioned. Heading in the right direction, I guess, is one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is, uh, is this guy the, the Butch Jones of the Big Ten? Hear me out. Butch Jones went from five wins to seven wins his first year to his second year, right? What was Butch Jones' favorite thing to talk about? Brick by brick. I mean, he had a bunch of dumbass quotes and sayings, but brick by brick, five-star hearts, life champions. The list goes on and on with our good buddy Lyle, Butch Jones. But what does P.J. Fleck have to say about the Minnesota football program? Well... He compares it to building a house. Year one, excavation, basically starting over. Year two, lay the foundation. This is according to P.J. Fleck. That was last year. Year three, this year, build the frame, P.J. Fleck says. So uh, this guy's giving us some, uh, some Butch Jones quotes here. And speaking of Butch Jones, how about our good buddy, uh, the Butch Jones of the ACC, Willie Tiger? Yeah, he had a big quote this past week. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, when they asked him about his recruiting, or lack thereof, I had not been impressive with the recruiting Willie Taggart has in at Florida State, they asked him about it, brushed it off. Uh, tell me where you've heard this before. We're not recruiting for stars. We're recruiting for heart. We're looking for five-star hearts is basically what he said. Where have we heard that before? Oh, oh yeah. The, the band player, Lyle, Alabama's head coach in waiting. How much time can I waste on in this video? Let's move on. All right, P.J. Fleck, year three, what's he going to do? Borderline top 25 team, I think, in my opinion. I do think Minnesota is a better team in 2019 than what you would think if you just looked at their record and their wins and losses from last year. They've got a lot of talent returning. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Uh, and I like P.J. Fleck as a head coach, although I'm not sure uh, all of the hype is justified based off of uh, what we've seen from him the first two years. Let's take a look at the offense. 
Offense should be pretty good in 2019, at least compared to what we've seen in previous years from Minnesota. They returned 90% of their production on offense, 90% of their yards, 90% of their touchdowns, all comes back on offense. Nine starters returning, which is the most in the Big Ten West. Some people have Minnesota as a sleeper to win the Big Ten West, which of course is the weaker of the two divisions within the Big Ten in the West. Uh, you've got Wisconsin, Iowa, and Nebraska. Uh, most people are picking one of those three teams. People who are looking for a dark horse or a sleeper, some people are throwing their hat in the ring with P.J. Fleck in Minnesota. At quarterback, a couple of options at quarterback because of an injury situation last year, right? Zach uh, Anastad, is that his name? He started the first seven games last year, which weren't good for Minnesota. They started out three and four, and he got hurt, right? In comes Tanner Morgan, who started the season as the backup. Minnesota finished under Tanner Morgan, four and two. He's more of a runaround guy. I mean, they both can throw the ball, uh, but he gives you more with your legs than uh, Anikstead does. More, some people consider Anikstead to be a, a, a better pure passer. But if you look at the numbers, Tanner Morgan appeared to have the better season last year between the two. We'll see which way they go this year. But in any case, two experienced quarterbacks returning for P.J. Fleck on offense at Minnesota. Wide receiver Tyler Johnson made the All-Big Ten team last year, right? Set school records for uh, yards and touchdowns. 1,169 yards, 12 touchdowns. So a great season by any standard. I don't care where you're playing, what type of offense you're running. If you've got a receiver that's catching uh, 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 or, or that has over 1,100 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns, that's a great year on any team, in any system, in any conference. You also got uh, Rashad Bateman, who now this may be the mo one of the most talented potential superstar type players in the Big Ten this year. Very highly recruited, chooses Minnesota. Decent year last year, right? Uh, what did he have? Seven hundred yards and six uh, six touchdowns. That's better than decent. I mean, seven hundred yards is a great season uh, by most standards. He'll he'll be a sophomore this year. Huge things expected from him like uh, talent and potential wise he's probably better than tyler johnson or at least has the uh potential to be at some point down the road maybe even this year he's really really good uh both their tight ends return running back situation uh muhammad ibrahim is that his name you know I, again i don't make up these names um i just google them and write them down and do my best to pronounce them wrong 5.7 yards per carry last year and nine touchdowns right that was as basically the third string running back. Smith and Brooks uh, were basically 1A and 1B, right? They're both gone. Uh, now, you're looking at a career here between Smith and Brooks. If you add their numbers up, 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns. That's a lot of production to lose there from those two running backs. We'll see if Ibrahim uh, can make it up on his own, sort of. Uh, or if they look for somebody else to sort of, uh, you know, go with like a, a running back by committee approach again. But Ibrahim, not terrible, not elite, um, but you know what you're going to get with him, right? Offensive line, two starters are gone from last year, which of course means three uh, returning. Got to replace left tackle, the most important position on an offensive line, in my opinion, left tackle and center. Um, but you got to uh, replace uh, left tackle. So we'll see. So a lot of parts back on offense. I think this is one of the reasons a lot of people are pointing at Minnesota and saying maybe they have a breakout season where they can get to possibly uh, nine, maybe even 10 wins, especially if you consider bowl possibilities, maybe they can get to a 10th win there. A uh, lot of parts back on offense. Now on defense, defense was not good last year, particularly early in the season. Ended up firing a defensive coordinator midway through the season. Where have we seen that before? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, you fired a defensive coordinator midway through the season, right? Why'd you fire him? Well, you had given up 42 points or more four weeks in a row. Four weeks in a row. The final straw, 646 yards and 55 points given up to? No. I must have wrote this down wrong. Hold on. Illinois. No wonder you fired that guy. Jesus Christ. So you name this uh, interim uh, defensive coordinator, uh, Joe, whatever his name is. Uh, I can't read my own writing. Joe Rossi, is that his name? Anyway, you ended up naming him permanent defensive coordinator. So he's the guy heading into this year. Top two tacklers from last year's defense, which again was not very good, 
are gone. So you got to replace your top two tacklers. But six starters do return, including, uh, what is this, uh, Carter Coughlin on the outside. He's good. Uh, probably one of your best players on defense this year, to be honest. Him and safety Antoine Winfield Jr. Now, he was injured. Uh, was he injured last year? Yes, he was injured last year, early in the season. But in 2016, this guy was a freshman All-American. So, I mean, this guy's got a lot of talent and potential. Those are your best two players there on defense. Um, defensive tackle, you bring a grad transfer in from Notre Dame. You also have two freshmen that are expected to play at defensive tackle. Very thin on the defensive line. If I had to pick one area of Minnesota's team that concerns me the most, it would be the defensive front. Even the grad transfer you bring in from Notre Dame, this guy has two tackles total in his career. So he's been at Notre Dame three years, wasn't able to get on the field much, two total tackles. He graduates early, transfers to Minnesota, so he's eligible to play this year. Now, Notre Dame has had some really, really good defensive lines over the last few years. So it could be that this guy from Notre Dame is the best defensive tackle Minnesota has, even though he wasn't able to get on the field at Notre Dame. We'll see, but huge question marks on the defensive line. That would be my... Um, that would be my number one. Uh, that would be my number one concern. All right, let's put the schedule up on the screen. Now you guys know how we do this. I'm going to go through this game by game. I'm going to give you my thoughts on each game, and I'm going to give you a winner and a loser on every single game. With of course the goal being to come up with a final regular season record at the end of the video. Um, I'm more concerned really with the overall record than I am exactly who a team may lose to. But I used to just do overall records and say. For example, I used to say, okay, I think this team is going to go 9-3, and three, and I think those three losses are going to come to three of these five teams that are sort of toss-up games. People bitched and moaned and cried. So now I try, I, I do my best to pick an exact winner and a loser for every single game. But here we go. Start off in a non-con with a lower classification school, South Dakota State, win. Um, again, I don't want to hear anything about what South Dakota State may or may not be doing in whatever division or conference it is that they play in below Minnesota. The hype is out to yin-yang for P.J. Fleck in Minnesota. <laughs> There's no way you should lose South Dakota State. If you start off 0-1, I'm not paying attention to Minnesota or P.J. Fleck for the rest of the season. I don't think that'll happen. You get a win, you're 1-0. Week two on the road at Fresno State. Now, this is a much more dangerous game, a much more dangerous game. You beat them last year at home 21-14. This is, I think this could be a close game again this year. Fresno State is one of those teams that seems to beat a Power 5 team every so often, or at least come close, right? They're out on the West Coast. Typically, they play some Pac-12 teams every year. Home and home here with Minnesota out of the Big Ten. Very close game last year. I expect a close game again this year. You got to go out there to play them. This is a dangerous spot, and I'm going to be honest with you. I went back and forth on this game between win and loss. I decided to give you a win here, but don't, don't take this game lightly. This could easily turn out bad for you, but I give you the win, you're 2-0. Week three, I think, is another dangerous game. Uh, Georgia Southern at home. I gave you a win, but I don't think anybody would be surprised if you start the season 2-1. and one. I really don't. I've got you at 3-0. These are no pushover teams here, Fresno State and Georgia Southern. And as high as people are on Minnesota, as high as people are on P.J. Fleck, they are not nearly as talented, Minnesota, as the upper echelon of Power 5 teams. Teams like Fresno State and Georgia Southern, they look forward to nothing more than beating a Power 5 team. They don't care if it's the worst Power 5 team in America. It's a notch on their belt or whatever. If they can beat a Power 5 team, you're going to get the absolute best that Fresno State and Georgia Southern has to offer here. I'm giving you a win in both of them, okay? I'll buy the P.J. Fleck hype, but you better start 3-0 or Uncle Lou is going to be extremely disappointed in you. 3-0 heading into your first bye week. You get two bye weeks this year. It's not a change in college football. Every team gets two bye weeks, right? Uh, in order for the college football season to start on the weekend that they want it to start on, and end on the first Saturday in December with the conference championship games. There's an extra Saturday in that time period, so every team gets an additional bye week. You get yours after week three. Come out of that, you start your conference play on the road at Purdue. You beat the bejesus out of Purdue last year. I think it was 41 to 10 you beat Purdue, right? You beat Purdue almost as bad as Purdue beat Ohio State and Urban Meyer. Anyway, I digress before I end up regressing, but... uh. I have you as a loss this year. 
I like Purdue. Purdue and Minnesota have a lot of similarities. Uh, Purdue's head coach is, is on a lot of people's uh, short list for maybe a, a bigger and better job sooner rather than later. They also have one of the most exciting players in the Big Ten with Rondale Moore. You've got this sophomore wide receiver, Rashad Bateman. Um, this could be a matchup of, of two of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten, in my opinion. I know you beat the bejesus out of them last year. When we get a little later in the schedule, though, you're going to see there's a team that beat the bejesus out of you that I have you turning around and beating this year. So listen, just because you beat a team by 30 last year doesn't mean you're going to beat them this year. Just because you lost to a team by 30 last year doesn't mean you're going to lose to them again this year. I have your first L on the road at Purdue. You're sitting 3-1, and 0-1 oh in the Big Ten. All right. How about a string of W's? How would that be? Illinois. <laughs> How did they beat you last year? I don't understand. This makes no sense. It's hard to, it's hard to say Minnesota is on the up and up. Uh, you know, they're headed in the right direction. P.J. Fleck is one of the best coaches. But, but, but you have a losing streak to Illinois. Those two things seem to be, uh, seem not to go together. I'm going to chalk that up to some court, sort of weird glitch in the Matrix last year. You'll get revenge here. You should beat Illinois, and you should beat them big. Uh, so I have you with a win there. Nebraska. This will probably be one of the biggest games in the Big Ten West this year, in my opinion. Uh, I mentioned Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, the hot picks to come out of the West. Minnesota, uh, sort of a hot dark horse pick to come out of there. You get them at home, I gave you a win. If you've seen my Nebraska video, uh, you, you knew that was coming. Uh, if you want more, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on that game in particular, you can check the Nebraska preview video out. But I did give you a win over Nebraska, even though I think they're going to be a really good team this year with Adrian Martinez and Scott Frost. Then you got to go uh, on the road at Rutgers win. I'm just not a believer in uh, Rutgers. Shout out to Comic Dude, who shows up for a lot of the live streams, loyal Rutgers fan. I'm just not a buyer on Rutgers this year. Um, you should beat them really without a problem. Then you get Maryland at home. Again, win. But this is a game that could go either way. Maryland is another team. I keep saying this in several videos, but I'm going to say it again. Maryland, uh, Minnesota, Purdue, Iowa. These are, all, these are all the same team with different helmets. Any of these teams can beat any of the others on any given week. These mid, the middle of the pack teams, right? They're going to win some games. They're going to lose some games. I, I, this could go either way. You lost to them last year, forty-two to thirteen. Okay, so if you're upset about my Purdue pick and you, how I have you losing to them, even though you beat them by thirty last year. Well, looky here, Maryland beat you by thirty last year. Again, glitch in the matrix. You get revenge this year, and you beat the team with the ugliest, ugliest helmets in the history of college football. So that takes you into your second bye week. Come out of that, close the season up with your four most difficult games, in my opinion. Maybe throw Nebraska in there, too. This is a tough four stretch of games. Home against Penn State. I'm down on Penn State uh, in relation to where they have been. I don't think this is a rebuilding year for Penn State, but I do think it's sort of a transitional year for Penn State. I'd be absolutely shocked if Penn State is even competing for the Big Ten East in November. I just, I, I don't see it happening this year. That being said, they're going to catch you here. I, I think you lose at home to Penn State. And it doesn't get any better from there. You got to turn around and go on the road to Iowa. Uh, Iowa, a dangerous team, especially at home. Not as dangerous as Iowa State at home. I mean, you can't beat Iowa State at home, can you? I don't think Iowa State's lost a home game since the internet was invented. Uh, lucky for you, you're playing regular Iowa. Doesn't matter. I think you lose again. A, a close game. I mean, this one could, again, this game, the Maryland game, the Nebraska game, the Purdue game, these are all games. I'm not going to be surprised who, who wins these games. But I've got, uh, I've got Iowa coming out on top on that one. Back-to-back -back road games after Iowa, you got to go on the road to Northwestern. Didn't Northwestern win that division last year? They're going to be one of these teams again this year, Iowa, Maryland, you. I mean, I've got you losing. Listen, I mainly have you losing these two games because they're road games. They're at home. I think maybe you win one, maybe both of them. 
You end the season uh, with a home game at Wisconsin. Again, I've done a Wisconsin video, so if you've seen it, you know where I'm going here. But I think you beat Wisconsin. And again, people are going to say, how, how, how you beat Wisconsin but lose to Northwestern Iowa? This is what I mean. These teams here, like you, Minnesota, you're going to beat one or two of these better teams. I've got you, Hell, I've got you beating Nebraska and Wisconsin, who I think are probably the two best teams in the West. But then I've got you losing to people like Iowa and Northwestern and Purdue. So... Again, this is just what you see in the with teams in the middle of these conferences. Um, you know, Illinois is a basement dweller. They should lose to everybody. Ohio State and Michigan are elite. They should beat almost everybody. But the rest of the teams are going to win a few games they shouldn't and lose a few games they shouldn't. That's where I've got you coming down this year. That finishes you up at 8-4, and four, which I think is going to be good for second in the division. Now, keep in mind, you were 6-6 six and six last year in the regular season. So this will be a two-game improvement. Uh, so you get to spend all next offseason, you know, pumping more sunshine up PJ Flex butthole and talking about how he's got things heading in the right direction. Eight and four. Uh, that's how I see it. Second in the division. Uh, Rover Sports, sir. Uh, everything I said to you on your show when I called in when you were talking about Minnesota, um, I, I was 100 percent right after doing this research and studying what's going on here at Minnesota today. Um, it, it only further proves my theory. Uh, that you have seriously bumped your head and Bruce needs to take your internet away. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and have a great morning.